What's up guys? I'm Ryan with Ryan Epps Fishing. We are back at it today. We are not at the lake though. We are back here. We are at the house, in the garage, in the AC. We are going to take a look at the new boat today. I've got a few requests from some of y'all wanting to see the new boat, want me to do a walkthrough, kind of give y'all some likes and dislikes so far on the new boat. So that's what we're going to do today. Going to be a boat walkthrough. Y'all sit back, relax. Hope y'all enjoy today's video. All right, now for starters, uh, let's talk about the reason I chose Tracker and the reason I chose Mercury. Both of them are pretty much the same reason. Uh, I have been running that old Tracker boat of mine for a whole lot of years, and uh, I got a lot of good years out of it. It's still going right now, still running. And, uh, you know, it, I was just comfortable with it. It's what I was used to. Um, so it was going to be pretty hard for me to change from that. I was looking at several other boats, the Ranger Aluminum Series. Uh, I was looking at those boats pretty heavy. Uh, but ultimately, I decided on the Tracker. Uh, like I say, I've just got a lot of confidence in it. And the same, uh, same reason for the Mercury motor. Uh, I ran that Mercury motor on that old Tracker for a long time. I mean, I probably had that boat roughly 15 years somewhere in there. And in all that time, that boat broke down on me twice in 15 years. And uh, both both of them was pretty easy fixes. So, you know, it, it was really a no-brainer for me. Uh, I did look around for some other boats, but as far as the motor goes, uh, I'm always gonna have a Mercury motor unless something drastic changes or, you know, I, I have something catastrophic go wrong with this when it changes my mind. Um, you know, I, I've had no reason thus far to change from Mercury, and that's, that's a reason I went with them, so. We're going to get started here. We'll do a walkthrough on the outside here. I'll tell y'all a little bit about the boat. This is a Tracker Pro Team 195. This is actually a 2018 model. This is their 40th anniversary edition. Uh, I could have got the 2019 model. Uh, there was a little bit of a difference uh, in those boats. They redesigned at 2019. And uh, for me, I just, I like the 2018 layout of this anniversary edition better than I did the, the 2019. The biggest reason for that is you had that big uh, center box right there. That's a rod box right there in the center that lifts up. Uh, I liked that box. I'm not sure really I could tell you why, but I did. I wanted that on here. The 2019 models, um, I believe they've got two boxes stacked right here with lids that open. And I think the rod locker is on the side. Uh, I just like this floor layout just a little bit better, so uh, that's why I decided to get the 2018 model. Now, this is not carpet in here. This is vinyl. Um, if you all uh, saw my old boat at all, you would know that I had taken the carpet out of that boat. Uh, I actually had sprayed that boat. That was tough coat liner uh, that I had sprayed that boat with. And uh, the biggest reason for me not wanting carpet is uh, I do a lot of other fishing other than bass. Uh, and, uh, you know, if you're standing up here and you got carpet and you're throwing a cast net and stuff, which I do quite a bit, uh, you're throwing a cast net off a deck of this boat and stuff and dragging it up there on carpet, it won't be long before uh, the state can legally uh, condemn your boat for just being damn nasty. It gets absolutely gross in here. I mean, uh, it just, it don't work for me. So, I had sprayed the old boat. This vinyl so far, I've been really impressed with it. It doesn't get near as hot as the spray-on liner did in my old boat. And uh, so far, it's been very easy to clean and stuff. Now, I have not thrown a cast net off the deck of this boat yet. So, we will still have to see... Um, how this is going to turn out and how this is going to look after I drag a bunch of shit up here and dump a bunch of shad out here on the deck. Uh, so that's yet to be seen. But so far, just normal everyday use. It's been very easy to clean. Been very happy with the vinyl. All right. So this boat right here came with a Mercury four-stroke. That's a 150 that's on there. Um, got a stainless steel prop on it. 
which was a nice feature. Uh, so far, the motor has, has done really well. We got through the break-in period on it there, and uh, I've had no complaints so far. I will say about these four strokes, this is an extremely quiet motor. If, if you're somebody that's used to running the old two-stroke motors, I don't know how the newer two-stroke motors sounded, uh, but I know my old 40 horse, uh, that sucker was loud. And this boat right here, the first time that I went to get on it, uh, they had it cut on there at the dock idling, and I didn't even know the thing was cut on. So very, very quiet motor. It's nice to be able to, uh, to go down the lake with, with some speed and uh, still be able to talk to the person next to you and have a conversation. So um, I like that about it. The trolling motor on the front here, this is not the trolling motor that come on it. This is actually the trolling motor off of my old boat. Uh, this is a Minn Kota power drive. I did have a, uh, what came on it was a Minn Kota Maxim. Uh, and it had the trolling motor there. You can see it's got the place for the recessed trolling motor. Uh, foot pedal. But I took that off. Reason being, uh, you know, I fish deep a lot. Uh, a lot of the situations that I fish, I got to have spot lock. And uh, this trolling motor right here has got spot lock. It does have the remote. Um, it doesn't have a foot pedal. You can actually get a wireless one if you want to. I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, I have tried the wireless foot pedals. Um, I've actually played around with the one, played around with an Altera that had it. And uh, there's a little bit of a delay in the wireless uh, foot pedal. And uh, that kind of messes with me a little bit. I, so I'm not a fan of that. Uh, I've gotten used to using the remote, so it's not a big deal to me. Um, you know, it's, I'm just as comfortable now using a remote as I used to be using a foot pedal. So I did put this older trolling motor on here. Um, the only downside to this trolling motor is uh, this is a 12 volt trolling motor. The reason I bought that at the time was I was trying to conserve weight in my old boat and uh, I didn't want to put an extra battery in there for it. So that's the downside to this. If I had it to do over, I would have got the 24 volt. It just spreads that charge out a little bit and you, it ain't so hard on a single battery. Um, I go through a lot of batteries with this trolling motor right here. Uh, it does help if you buy good batteries, um, but it will eat up some batteries if you fish as much as I fish. Uh, so. That's my only regret with this trolling motor right here. Sonar up front is a Humminbird Helix. This is a seven inch sonar. Uh, basically, um, I'm using this up here when I'm up front. I have my maps on quite a bit. Uh, I've got uh, Lake Master maps on this uh, unit right here. And uh, I'm using my maps or if I'm vertical fishing, I'll use it for 2D. But that's about all that I will use that sonar right there for. Back here at the console, I have got my 12 inch unit right here. This is a Lowrance Elite Touch. Um, this is by no means their most expensive version. But, I can get that off. It does the job. I have been very impressed with this unit right here. Um, and uh, it's found me a lot of fish this year. Uh, I'm a Lowrance guy. Uh, Humminbirds are good units. Their new units are, are excellent. People love them. Just personal preference. I just like the Lowrance. Now, as far as mapping goes, at Lake Master Map, I like it a lot better than Navionics, but it's what you got. I haven't seen the sea maps yet uh, for some of our lakes around here, but I've heard they look pretty good too. But anyway, Lowrance 12 inch Elite TI uh, at the console. The actual console of this boat itself, uh, this is not fiberglass, this is a molded plastic. Um, which, you know, if you want a molded fiberglass console, you're gonna pay for it. Um, you know, you can get these boats a little bit cheaper uh, than you can your, your higher end boats, but you're gonna have to sacrifice some stuff like that. What I did was, cause this unit right here is kinda heavy. I actually took this off. You can see, you can see the diamond plate right there. I reinforced this. I've actually got some aluminum angle under here to reinforce this uh, this plate and uh, put a piece of diamond plate on it there just to sturdy that up. And uh, it's worked pretty well. There ain't a lot of bump. It's worked pretty well. There's not a lot of bump, not a lot of vibration right there. So uh, 
you know, it's pretty sturdy. On to the console itself. Uh, console looks pretty good. Um, it's got a nice little place right here. You can put your cell phone. I like that. It's pretty convenient. You don't have to worry about that sucker flying off or going in. Stick your phone there. You can see it when text messages pop up, stuff like that. Uh, over here, you got your gauges. Uh, these are basically all for the live well, except for your horn. Um, this is your uh, pump in, pump out, and then you've got your aerator system in the live well there. You've also got lights in the live well, which is a pretty cool feature. I fish a, uh, a night tournament every now and then uh, here locally, and uh, it is pretty nice to be able to cut them lights on in your live well there and mess around, call, do whatever you need to do. So, pretty good feature. All right, so we're moving on inside the boat now. Give y'all a look in here. Uh, you got two big storage compartments on either side of the rod locker. Uh, they're equal size. They are identical. And uh, basically in this one, I just got random crap in here. They're pretty big. Uh, you can store a lot of crap in here if you want to. Uh, I've got some life jackets, some extra life jackets and stuff. I keep my lights for night fishing. Uh, keep some tools fuses, way bag, uh, got my rain gear and everything in there. So that's just basically general storage. Um, all your boxes up here, they do have locks on them, so you can lock them. One thing that I don't like for that reason right there, um, they don't have the pistons on them here to keep them, keep them up. Uh, your center rod locker here does, so I'm gonna be adding the pistons to this to hold it up. It's just a little bit nicer. Keeps them from slamming down. Um, your center box right here, this is your rod locker. It's got two latches on it there. Pretty nice deep rod locker. Um, most of my rods are usually out on the deck. So uh, I really don't use the rod locker that much. I keep, uh, keep my running lights in here, net. Uh, I've got my way board down there. I uh, keep a few rods in here, but uh, so far I haven't I haven't put many rods in here. Uh, it will hold quite a few rods. You can actually it's uh, it's designed to hold eight, but you can actually fit more than that in there if you need to. Um, but you can see that center box right there. It's got the pistons on it. Uh, I just hadn't got around to putting them on the onto the side boxes yet. Moving on, we're gonna slide over here to this compartment. This is your second store side storage compartment on the front deck. Again, it's got a locking latch too. Uh, this is where I keep all my baits, all my tackle, uh, tackle boxes. And let me tell you something, you can always tell if I'm catching fish or not, uh, if you open this rod locker and you look how neat it is. If everything's nice and put away and neat in here, all organized, I'm catching them. I'm on fire. If they ain't, and it looks like this, and they shit strung around everywhere, yep, struggle is real. That's how you know. I've been digging around trying to find them. Not too good, but it has been good so far uh, storing my stuff in here. Another cool feature you can see around the lid, around the rim here, it's got these little, this little drainage system. So any water that goes down in here, it'll actually drain out these little ports and uh, go out there to drain out. Uh, just kind of helps to keep this compartment dry. So far, I haven't had a problem uh, with the compartments getting too wet. I mean, I do keep my boat in the garage, but uh, it's been out in the rain a time or two so far, and uh, I hadn't had a problem. So, there you go. There's your tackle. Front here. Now, I call this right now, this is, a, this is where they had the recessed trolling motor pedal. Um, Right now, I'm calling it the jackass hole because if I don't get this filled, I'm eventually gonna make a jackass out of myself. When I fall through it, over the side, whatever, uh, I think what I'm gonna do, I'm actually not gonna take it out. I'm thinking right now, uh, I'm just gonna make a lid to go down and close. And that way, if I'm uh, fishing a tournament or uh, something like that, I can put a few bags of worms or whatever I'm using, crankbaits, uh, up here where I can get to them real fast to be able to change or, or grab another one if I need to. So that's what I'm thinking right now. Just hadn't got the time to get around to doing that. Uh, you got a cup holder right up here, put your drink. 
You got a place here for your pliers, scissors, um, whatever. Uh, trolling motor switch right there. You got your tilt for your rear motor. Now one stupid thing that they did do, and this was pretty ignorant, they mounted the, uh, the sonar that came on this boat was a little Lowrance hook, and they had it mounted right here. I'm not really sure why they did that, uh, but there was a hole right here in the floor when I took it out, which ain't too damn good. Um, so, I don't have this wired up yet, I still gotta do that, but I got a little cigarette lighter port that I put in right here, and uh, I'm actually gonna use that to be able to put my light for night fishing, uh, to plug it in right there. It's got suction cups, it'll stick right there to the front. Um, and that will be a whole lot better than running that cord all the way back to the console like I've been doing. So, that's another thing on the to-do list we ain't got around to yet, but it is coming. They got some straps on each side. They do have your ride straps on each side. I don't really like these either. Uh, for one, this is too close together. Can't fit enough rods up here. They all over top each other. Same way on the other side. Uh, so I am eventually gonna swap these out. Uh, maybe some retractable ones, I, I don't know. But gonna be doing something different with that. Don't really like them little straps. But for right now, that's what we got. Moving on through the boat. Uh, now these right here are pretty cool. Uh, these are little dry boxes. Uh, I usually throw my wallet, my keys, and everything in here. It stays really dry. Just a little tube goes back in here. You got one on each side. So I think, you know, I usually keep my scales in there. Uh, some stuff like that. Uh, this right here is a cooler, which has got some crap in it right now. It usually ends up just being a trash can, basically, is what it's been. Um, this is not a Yeti cooler, if that's what you're thinking. Let me tell you, uh, it does not hold ice very well. Now, it is August, and it's 100 degrees outside. But if you're looking for a high-performance cooler in a boat, this ain't it. Keep on looking. Uh, I really don't care that much. As long as it holds a little bit of ice for a little bit of time, I'm cool with that. It'll be a hell of a cooler in the winter, I can tell you that. Uh, but... Got your drain plug down there. Like I say, most time right now, it just ends up being a trash can, which is which works too. You got a little on and off push light right here, uh, a little light for you to see. Uh, I have added like in the tackle compartment here, and I've only done it to this one. Uh, I've got a little uh, switch light down there. Lights up my compartment so I can see what I'm doing at night. Uh, moving on back here, uh, seats are pretty comfortable, can't complain too much. Uh, under the center seat right here, you got your onboard battery charger right there. That's a three bank charger. Uh, plug it right into the wall, it'll charge all the batteries on the boat. Uh, works out well. Right here is your live well. Uh, and I'll flip the lights on so y'all can see. I'll tell you what, we got a habit of people calling me while I'm making videos. Ah! People's crazy. All right, back to it. Live well. I guess I could. I probably need to mute that. All right, we good. Let's get back to it. All right, live well. You see the live well lights right there. Really nice feature. Uh, it's got a pretty big live well. I believe, don't hold me to it, I believe it's 27 gallons. Uh, it has performed flawlessly so far. This live well does have something stupid in it, and that's this divider right here. That gap right there in the bottom, and I've heard this from other people complain about it. You put that sucker down there, you would be amazed and how them fish can get under it. I don't care how big they are. I've had three pounders getting under that. They push that right up. And, uh, you know, most of the time, if I catch a good one, I've got it over here, and I've got my ones that I want to cull over here on this side. So you can just reach, grab one real easy, and toss him out. Uh, yeah, that don't work so good 
because after about 30 minutes or so, they're all jumbled up everywhere. So I got to come up with a solution for that and uh, get that gap down there blocked so that they can't go through there. And uh, hopefully it will function a little bit better. But there's your live well. Nothing fancy, standard old live well. Now you got two side storage compartments over here. Uh, they do have a drain in the bottom of both of them. And uh, I'm basically just using this for useless crap. You got sunscreen in there, contact solution, basic needs. I usually keep my map cards in there, different cards for whatever. Got an identical one over here on the side. Uh, and I've got my rope for uh, launching the boat when I'm by myself. Got a little G-juice in there, basically my live well stuff. Got your fizz needle, your fin clips and uh, everything that you need to keep them fish healthy. Keep that right there. So, see if I can find anything else stupid. Right there, looking right at you. I don't know whose idea it was to put cup holders in the floor. That was about the stupidest idea that that person, whoever they are, has had in a minute. Uh, that's dumb. That's absolutely dumb. You end up stepping on your... I don't know how many McDonald's cups and stuff I have stepped on and crushed. Some of them ain't even mine. You got your fishing buddy back there, and they got their sweet tea stand up here, and you run back there to throw a fish in the live well, and you just crush a damn tea right there on the floor of the boat. It's ignorant. I don't like that. Nothing I can do about it right now. So, we got cup holders in the floor. Now... Another pet peeve of mine, and I just had to get over it. I despise one bilge pump drain right here in the center. If any of y'all have ever had water in your boat, you know it goes to the sides. So, one bilge pump drain right there in the middle does nothing but get your damn feet wet. Uh, it's a pet peeve of mine, but there was nothing I could do about it. So, I just had to get over it. But Ideally, I'd rather have one on each side. Really don't need one in the middle. Uh, whoever that creative person was, they could have put another cup holder right there. Then you could have had three drinks to step on and squash. But anyway, moving on for your passenger over here, you have got a little rod storage system. I don't like this neither. Um, I knew the first time I saw it, I said, I will never use that. Um, Whoever's in my boat can use it at their own risk. You know, the buddy your rod goes in here. The idea is you lay them down the side here, and then you strap them down. Well, you end up with about six rods right here piled on top of one another, and then you're going to take this little bitty choke strap right here and pull it out and ring it over your expensive poles. Um, I have not been brave enough to put my rods over there yet, and I doubt that I will, but... I have seen people do it in this boat, and their rods have stayed in one piece, so I guess you can't call this a fail. Um, my rods ain't going over there. Let's put it that way. So, there is that. One of the coolest features about this boat, since we're over here, is right here. This VersaTrack system runs down through here. It's a rail system. Uh, you can see, like right here, I have got a go uh, a ram mount, just a little carriage bolt that goes in here. You can put a wing nut or whatever on it. Uh, I've got a little ram mount here to hold a GoPro uh, for making these videos. But this was a big deal to me. Um, this was one of the selling points on this boat for me. I love this VersaTrack system. Uh, you can pretty much get them carriage bolts and mount whatever you want on here without having to drill holes in your side rail big deal to me uh you know when i'm going out striper fishing or whatever i can actually put rod holders right here uh without drilling a hole i can slide them the full length of the boat front to back uh however i need them convenient no holes i like it you know you can get what will happen is i'm gonna have to get uh get my buddies that are sitting over here with their sweet tea I'm going to have to get them my cup holder to go here on the VersaTrack uh, so they don't have to stick it down there in the floor 
uh, like Tracker wants them to. And it's done. So, they do have it though. We'll get some cup holders, whatever. I don't know. You can get all kinds of crap for that verse track. I like it. I have been very happy with the boat so far. It has done beyond what my expectations were uh, to this point. I'm very happy with it, uh, happy with the purchase. Um, you know, but I hope if nothing else, everybody that has watched my videos from day one, if there's any younger guys out there or, or girls, whatever, that are they're getting into fishing, uh, you saw that old boat of mine. And uh, I know even with that boat, I was a lot more fortunate than there are a lot of people out there uh, in what I got to fish out of, even though it was an old boat and it didn't look the best. But uh, the main point that I'm wanting to get across to, to you guys is you don't have to have the $70,000 bass boat to be able to go out there and put fish in the boat and have fun and learn and catch fish. Um, you know, you go out there with what you got and make do. Um, them fish, they don't know what you catch them out of. I promise you that. You don't need it. Now, are they nice? Hell yeah, they're nice. Real nice. Um, are there a lot nicer boats out there than this? You better believe it. This is a budget boat, a mass-produced budget boat uh, that was in my budget uh, in a brand and everything that I am comfortable with and I have a lot of confidence in. Uh, it's got a great warranty on it. I was totally comfortable with the brand, boat, motor, trailer, everything. That's the reason I went with it. Uh, you find brands and stuff that you're comfortable in, that's what you go with. Um, but it's a big step up from what I had. It allows me to go out there and run when I need to. I don't have to worry about uh, you know, where I'm going to put in at and how long it's going to take me to get somewhere from point A to point B. I'm not nearly as limited as I used to be. Um, so. Like I say, big deal. Those fish don't know what you catch them out of. Uh, I hope that those of y'all that have watched my videos from day one and saw how many fish we, we put in that old tracker, uh, understand that and uh, you know have confidence when you go out there. No matter what you're fishing out of, go out there, have a good time, learn, and uh, catch you some fish. So. That's all I got for y'all today, guys. If you like the videos, make sure you go hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit that notification bell. That's going to let you all know when I put out all my new videos. If you got any questions or comments for me, feel free to leave those in the comment section down below. I will get back to y'all with any answers that I can give you. Until next time, y'all make some time. Get out there on the water and catch you a few. I'm Ryan Epps. Y'all have a good one.